Hey everyone, Jesse here with the Wandering Mantis channel. Today I'm going to give you a breakdown of my visit to the CV-16 USS Lexington in Corpus Christi, Texas. I hope you enjoy. Located on North Beach in Corpus Christi, Texas, the Lexington Museum is the centerpiece of the museum district and has been since 1992. Pay attention as you near the museum, the streets are not exactly straightforward, but doesn't present too much of a problem. Public parking is available for $5. The Lexington is located adjacent to the public beach, and visitors are greeted outside with an open display of what's in store for them inside. These artifacts make for great photo opportunities, and it really gets the kids excited about what's to come. The walk to the museum is an uphill trek, but shuttle service is available at times for guests with difficulties and disabilities. This was an operating U.S. Navy ship, so remember this is a walking and stair navigating tour, so when planning, just be careful if you've got small guests. The museum hours vary from 9 to 5 or 9 to 6, depending on the time of the year. The tickets are $18.95 for adults, $16.95 for teens, and $13.95 for kids as of 2021. They do also offer senior and military discounts. This general admission ticket gets you in for the day and is all access. There are some other special events and simulators inside that do cost extra. Once inside, you begin one of five self-guided tours, starting with the hangar deck. Inside this 654 feet long by 70 foot wide area, covering 40,000 square feet, you will have many opportunities to see and learn about where the planes were stored on this carrier. Also in the hangar deck is the gift shop, a theater for videos about the ship, a food court, and many different photo opportunities with the artifact displays, like this rocket engine. There are quite a few planes down here, including this TBM Avenger and the previously shown SBD Dauntless. Among the planes are jeeps and there's also some weapons displays for both in aircraft and on ground fighting. There are also several flight simulators which are a little extra, about $5 a person, but are a lot of fun for the kids. Once you're ready for more tours, you can head down to either the galley deck, forecastle, and I'm sorry Navy guys if I'm saying that wrong, or lower decks. These are all well marked and easily lead you through the ship. One note that the ship is air conditioned, but it does get hot in some parts of the lower decks, so consider these factors when planning. As you navigate each tour, considering it takes about half an hour without much reading to go through each one, but you could easily spend more if you're a history buff. The lower deck tour starts with the living quarters and support elements that it took to feed and take care of the 3,000 sailors and air personnel that were on board during wartime conditions. You get to see how these sailors slept, ate, worked, got medical care, and much more on this particular tour. As you go through this tour, you'll see how self-sufficient the ship really was, and it had most amenities with small cities. After going through this section, you find that it really wasn't that far away from home when they were out at sea.
Another hidden gem within this tour is a exhibit on mine and torpedo warfare. It was a relatively small exhibit, but pretty neat stuff. Once deep in, you get to experience what it was like to work in the ship's engine room. I imagine the noise here would be incredibly intense. You can take a gander in at the four Westinghouse steam turbine engines, which drove the four screws with a whopping 150,000 horsepower. There were several interactive displays down here as well to give you a sense of what it was like working, although they were a little odd in retrospect. As you can see, it was just a video cast onto a dummy. Near the end is a display over 440 models of various ships, planes, and other vehicles. This collection was really awesome and the details on the model made me spend a little more time in it. It also helped that the air condition in the room was really, really good. Another tour is the galley deck, which contains the combat information center and the air controller areas. This area overall was pretty neat, however, it had pretty low lighting, so I, my filming here was relatively limited. There were many displays regarding how combat operations and even general operations was controlled from these vital areas. Something I learned, the USS Lexington served from 1943 to 1991 and was originally designated as the USS Cabot but was changed to the USS Lexington when the original CV-2 Lexington was sunk at the Battle of the Coral Sea. Something you'll see is the nickname of the ship is the Blue Ghost. That nickname was given to it by Tokyo Rose, as the Japanese had reported the ship being sunk four times, but obviously it did not. The next part I visited was the flight deck and navigation bridge. The bridge is where the ship was controlled and was a really neat tour, especially if you're interested in naval history. Just imagining overlooking what all these decks have seen send chills down your spine. Be kind, and despite the abundance of knobs and wheels, these are artifacts. And I did see several people attempting to turn them into those. The actual flight deck is 910 feet long and 142 feet wide. It is home to quite a few artifact aircraft and other displays. Since it is outside, be mindful of the weather. If you look closely in this particular video, you can see my son sliding around in the rain. Beyond the aircraft, there are several weapons displays, including a large deck gun and several anti-aircraft guns. You can also get a wonderful view of the bridge in Corpus Christi Bay. If you look carefully at the side of the bridge, you'll see ship statistics, as well as a location of a kamikaze attack that the ship withstood in World War II. The deck guns are static, of course, but you can go inside and check them out and see what it was like to operate them. There are several 20mm anti-aircraft guns located near the back of the ship on the side of the deck. I would recommend taking your kids there as you can actually get on those and move them around and play with them a little bit. This is Corpus Christi Bay as viewed from the bow. Here's the repulpit that allows you to walk out to the front and get a good look of the front of the ship and out on the bay. You can see the aquarium across the way there. While you're up front, you can also see where the catapult system used to launch the jets is seated on the actual deck of the room. Among the aircraft on the deck was an F-14 Tomcat, an F-4 Phantom, an AH-1S Cobra attack helicopter, and my favorite, 
an A6E intruder. The USS Lexington is credited with 21 months serving in combat conditions. This resulted in 372 enemy aircraft destroyed and 475 more enemy aircraft destroyed while on the ground. The ship's planes are credited with sinking 300,000 tons of enemy cargo and damaging an additional 600,000 tons. The ship's guns also shot down 15 enemy planes and assisted in downing five more. I would definitely plan to spend a little time up here for the full Lexington experience. It's also a great opportunity to let the kids run around and kind of exert some more energy before you move on to the next. Unfortunately, I ran out of time on this trip and was not able to film in the forecastle. This is where the anchor of the ship and the anchor chains were held. I have visited it some time ago in the past and would recommend you check that out on your tour but uh, didn't have enough time to film there. Man, that intruder is beautiful, isn't it? In conclusion, I highly recommend you go to the CV-16 USS Lexington and enjoy it with your entire family. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, please post them below. I am Jesse with The Wandering Mantis, signing off. Until next time.